Hello everyone. In this Hilding Shorts, I am going to discuss the difference between the Duchenne's muscular dystrophy and Baker's muscular dystrophy. These are two important muscular dystrophy and both are X-link recessive disorder in which you will find there is a defect in dystrophin. What is dystrophin? Dystrophin is a sarcolemal protein. And what is the difference between Duchenne's muscular dystrophy and Baker's muscular dystrophy? It is completely absent. Remember, it is completely absent in case of Duchenne's muscular dystrophy and Baker's muscular dystrophy. Dystrophin is having partial absence. Another important uh, difference is onset. Onset of the Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is by 3 to 5 years age. Whereas onset will be 5 to 15 years in the Baker's muscular dystrophy. Clinical feature you will find both of them will be having progressive weakness of the girdle muscle. So as I said both of them will be having progressive weakness of the girdle muscle. And in this what you will notice that Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is not able to walk. Remember it is not able to walk after the 12 years of the age. Whereas Duchenne's uh, Baker's muscular dystrophy these patients will be able to walk after the age of 15 years. So after the age of 15 years they will be able to walk but again they will become non-ambulatory by the age of 27 years right and respiratory failure in Duchenne's it will occur by the age of second to third decade and in in case of Baker's muscular dystrophy respiratory failure will occur after fourth decade and again a very important salient feature between Duchenne's and, uh, and Baker's in Duchenne's cardiomyopathy will follow the skeletal so first they will have a skeletal involvement then cardiomyopathy will happen whereas in Baker's muscular dystrophy cardiomyopathy will occur before the skeletal progression and when you will see the biopsy biopsy will be having nearly similar feature only the uh, severity will be more in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy because there is a complete absence of the dystrophin. So what are the three important findings you, which you will notice in younger age of the Duchenne's muscular dystrophy? Number one, myofiber size variation. If you look at the uh, biopsy size, you can see the muscle fiber size, they are not of same size. They are all of different, different size. Some are smaller, larger. So that is what we say that it's a variation of the myofiber size. And then you can see in these areas, if you look at these area and you compare with the surrounding area, you will find they are little more basophilic. So this is called as basophilic regeneration of the myofiber. Basophilic regeneration of the myofiber was a question also in exam. So basophilic regeneration of myofiber, myofiber size variation and now you can see eosinophilic areas, wavy fibers are there. So this is the area showing endomycial fibrosis. So these are the three findings where you, you will find in the younger age of the Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. So what are these three things? Myofiber size variation, basophilic regeneration of the myofibers and endomyo, endomycial fibrosis. And when this, this patient will have an advancement of the age, this disease will also progress. And what you will notice now you can see the variation in the myofiber is more marked more extensive so extensive or marked variation in the myofiber size as you can notice and you can see that here you can notice these are empty spaces which are the fat cells these empty spaces are the fat cells and what what has happened these myofiber you can see these are the muscle fiber which should have been here to here but now they have been replaced by the empty fatty cells so this is called as fatty replacement so when disease will progress they will have a fatty replacement and marked variation in the myofiber size when you will see the immunohistochemistry of the uh, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy so you can see this is the normal individual in normal individual what you will notice you can see the cell and there will be a brown IHC you can notice these are the brown IHC so you can see that entire surface of the cell membrane or sarcolemma will be having brown ISC that is the normal finding but in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy now you look at here you can see only cells you cannot see the brown color no brown IHC is present because there is a complete absence please remember there is a complete absence of the dystrophin in Duchenne's muscular dystrophy now the same thing you will see 
in case of Baker's muscular dystrophy. Again, you can see brown ISC under normal condition. They are all looking brown in color, right? So there is a full brown homogeneous color. But in Baker's muscular dystrophy, as I said, severity will be less. And in this patient, you will find reduced staining because because of the damage of dystrophin will be not complete. There is a partial absence of the dystrophin. That is why you can notice their brown color is quite prominent at some places. Right. So that is why we say that partial brown IHC. And this is how we dis di distinguish between the Duchenne's versus Baker's muscular dystrophy. Duchenne is having complete absence and Baker is having partial absence. My best wishes for all your exam. Keep revising this.